Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Right Opinion, the home of a twat with too much free time. And care, something that I would argue is very important in YouTube videos. My content has been a long journey from 2016, where I would rant about domestic UK politics and figures who most people in this video probably wouldn't even know in the slightest. And now we're here, where I make long form videos on drama and conflicts and the sorts of mentalities that lie behind them. However, one thing has never changed. The fact that I do care deeply about the topics I discuss. I every now and then I get the comment about how I've changed from what I used to do, and honestly I have. And it has brought me considerable success over previous topics of interest. But honestly, if I wasn't interested in the topics that I spoke about, if I wasn't invested in it, if I didn't think I had something to say, then I probably wouldn't have the tolerance to talk about it for half an hour in multiple videos. Make no mistake, you don't have to like my videos, but I do care about them. And that's the thing, I've always loved talking. In case you don't have that impression already, I love hearing opinions too. And honestly, if I don't have an opinion on something, it probably means I just haven't had the time to look into it. I've always loved looking up things and establishing what I actually feel about it and then communicating it to a greater audience. I've always argued that it is important to care about the content that you're actually making. I obviously can't sit here and look into the mind of every single person that I'm analyzing in my videos, which is why I don't tend to state intent. But I obviously have my own opinions on why I feel some people make their videos, but it would be such a level of conjecture that I seldom include that speculation. Personally, it's always safe to decide on the benefit of the doubt when making videos about people's intent because I think a false negative is much more harmful than a false positive. If people take the assumption that a person is good, then that may still have grounds to be changed in the future if that person behaves out of order more obviously. However, if the community assumes a person is bad, then I do think it gives the person a tougher job to grind out a redemption arc. Nonetheless, when someone behaves in a way that I do feel underlines a much deeper mentality of a creator, then we should definitely take the chance to call them out not just for audience awareness of the specific situation, but to understand the underlying mentality that can often drive these incidents. Now, there's little dispute of certain contents regarding the character at the center of today's topic. However, that's definitely not the entirety of what I want to look at, because stating that animal abuse is bad doesn't really add much, even though it undoubtedly is. So with that in mind, let's talk about a person at the center of today's controversy, Brooke Houts. Brooke Houts is a creator who has been on the YouTube platform for a good five years. In her time, she's made a variety of content. However, like every creator, she definitely experienced her fair share of peaks and troughs, covering story times, true crime, and her daily life, which is from the aspirations of an acting girl living it up in LA. She's chasing her dreams, she's kneading that dough, and she's going to turn that shizzle into bread. Overall, research learned that she had been a fairly uncontroversial figure, covering topics with a fairly unexceptional approach. There was a competence surrounding what she made, and when combined with the market of clickbait content, this would provide mild spikes of success. But it hadn't been so hot a lot of the time for her. However, recently, Brooke had actually began to turn her channel around with some decent momentum. This was mainly because she had a pet, a Doberman Pinscher named Sphinx, which has been typically bred to be a guard dog. People like videos about animals and her videos on the life of her dog were doing significantly better than any of her other content at the time. It was appealing to her existing audience and appealing to a new demographic of viewers as well. Success was back on the cards, her acting career was a buzz, and she was living life as good as she could. What could possibly go wrong? Well, as per, it seems that Brooke wanted to upload some dog-related content because her dog was a real draw for the view counter at the time, and it was obviously natural that you want to make the most of it. I wanted to prank my dog. She's over there. I put plastic wrap on the door. I'm going to have him run out. We're just going to see what he does. I don't know. What these pranks exactly ensued, well, we don't know. But we do know that there were some outtakes that probably shouldn't have been public. However, to be honest, I'm quite glad they were. Yes, not good at all. 
There are a few topics that people unite greater on than on the maltreatment of animals, especially pets. We observed it recently with the Alinity Divine situation, an incident that was much tamer for what she did. The topic will make people side with Peter, for goodness sake, which is an achievement in itself. People perceive pets as loyal to you, and therefore when you not only disregard that loyalty, but actively exploit it, it is cancellation time. And people really showed up for this one, the internet coming out in its hundreds and thousands, probably even millions, in larger numbers than our actual subscriber count, which had gone from moderate green to a very deep shade of alazaring crimson. Bob Ross. It's taken over me. The YouTube creators obtained this story, and with its popularity, it was impossible to ignore. Plenty of videos were made, some reporting, and some providing their opinions. It didn't just stop there, though. It went pretty mainstream, too, with many news outlets covering it and the additional developments that followed, including a full-blown police investigation, with many calling for her custody of the dog to be forfeited altogether, with some offering to pick the dog up themselves. Anyhow, when we have a conflict in which someone is unquestionably in the wrong, like any other, Brooke felt it was time to respond. She put out two responses, one thanking those who were being kind and understanding, and the others who were formally responding to those who had been dealing out the criticism in her direction. They were not well received, and her account has gone dark since. We will discuss the nature of these responses in the video, but I also want to have a look into what came before, and what can be drawn from the obvious. She also released a video response recently, uh, which I'll briefly break down to, although it does not change too much else. I think we should start from the start. I do not have anything else to add, so I suggest we jump right in. Brooke Hout started her channel in 2014. Now I know there were definitely some uploads in that time, however, unfortunately they have been lost. A great sadness indeed. I don't know exactly why she would have deleted these, but maybe she just didn't feel that they were part of what she wanted her channel to be. So, what did she want her channel to be? Well, it seems that she wanted it to be about story times. And boy, do I love a good story. When I say story times in this instance, I don't mean any of the actual story times that are someone telling you about something that legitimately happened. No, we're talking about the Tana Mongo type story times. They're basically about as real as my sex life. That he fucked me? With a I've spoken about these briefly before, but basically people like hearing about stuff because people's lives can be a bit boring. And to hear these crazy things from a YouTube about some wild tale where all these shenanigans took place seems appealing. You know, it's not my idea of an afternoon in front of the telly, but each to their own. I understand the appeal. However, what happened is that people realized that they could gradually escalate these stories for the sake of views and clickbait, which essentially led to a race to the bottom in which people's stories became more and more outlandish. Equally, this meant that there was a lot more leverage in the clickbait. If you had a story that was crazy, I mean, think how crazy you can make the thumbnail. Suddenly, a story about mowing the lawn became a story about how your dad fought a dangerous parasitic plant attack on your household. Am I doing this right? Maybe. I don't know. And yes, it is an exaggeration, but you understand what I'm hinting at. But maybe, just maybe, Brooke would defy this stereotype. Not really. Of course, there were some videos that were more faithful to their titles, such as the very riveting title of her being catfished, but a lot of them were visibly rubbish from a mile away. One of the first observable videos on her channel was Psycho Hairdresser Story. Okay, so firstly, honey, you don't need to put a space between hair and dresser. Though, you can if you want, each their own, but, you know, it's one word. You might as well just put it together, have a bit of fun. Secondly, when you see a title like that, what do you think? I'm thinking Sweeney Todd or something like that. Someone who's lost the plot completely. They've gone psycho. Let's see what Brooke's going to reveal. Like, well, if you want your hair to get to platinum, we should leave it on, but we don't want to damage your hair or anything like that. And I was like, okay, yeah, that's reasonable, like, whatever. Just leave it on. Listen to this next part, okay? I say, just leave it on unless it is going to either fall out or turn blue. So they're getting kind of sassy with me, right? Like, at this point, they're being a little, like, agitated and I was like I'm just trying to get my hair as they're rinsing my hair out I can tell that something's wrong they are kind of looking at it they're calling people over they're calling like the headmaster over they're like what like what's happening and I'm like oh my god what's happening they blow dry it it's chill it's chill we're blow drying my hair I wasn't really paying attention but when the blow drying is done the hair kind of underneath she like pulls it forward what does it look like it 
is freaking blue. And here is the real punchline, guys. Here's the knee slapper. When the lady, the headmaster, moves my hair in front so I can see the blue, she's like, is that cool toned enough for you? but they put this stuff on my hair and they turned it back to blonde and it was fine. It was just a really stressful time, okay? It was, it was not lit. It was not lit. So basically, she went to dye her hair. It went wrong, but it was fixed. But nothing particularly psychotic, whatever. Probably just a load of stressed out hair students who were probably working overtime to sort Brooke's hair out. And given the fact that it was resolved very shortly after, I don't really see this particularly warranting a story. Particularly one where you imply the blame is on the hairdresser. I'm no hair expert, but I highly doubt platinum hair is an easy job. It's a bit of a lack of empathy on Brooke's part, and I'm sure the people who dealt with her hair could have a story of their own. But anyway, that's not the point, although it does reek of entitlement, which we might touch on later. In another video, my teacher cut me. You might be surprised to find out her teacher did not actually cut her. I was almost impressed by the depths of clickbait she'd stooped to get the views. She's growing a third nipple. She pissed herself in a library and don't get her start about all the period disasters she has her most embarrassing period story her period horror story another period story but this time in a church what i found interesting is when one of her stories relating to a certain topic did well she suddenly recalled multiple stories on similar events somehow they managed to mess her hair up again and then she got kicked out of a salon i mean jesus christ what is even going on with her it does make me wonder what i need to do to have such an exciting albeit embarrassing life i mean of course i don't expect to have periods that would be a bit concerning but everything else aside brook content was pretty fake i don't use that as a particular insult but the stories are so clearly exaggerated with such hilarious titles that it's almost reaching the point of self-parody i mean imagine being one of brooke's friends and seeing that she has 80,000 views talking about how she pissed herself in a library now i digress Eventually, with enough clickbait and wacky stories, she did kick the momentum up on her channel. Her videos received a good few hundred thousand views at least. But the thing is that none of what Brooke did was particularly unique. Plenty of people were making similar content, and, and all she had done was latched onto a concept with moderate, but not exactly substantial success. Brooke's stories were clickbait, and although you can have an infinite number of stories, with clickbait you get a bit more limited, and when you use bait and switches, they will tune out. However, there is something so humiliating about a lot of these stories and their rather tepid delivery that makes me think that she might have some experience. When you look at some of these, we really should have picked it up. She burned down her friend's house. I mean, with all these stories, it does make me wonder why she isn't in jail already. The stories just don't stop coming. It just keeps happening to our poor old friend Brooke. But here's the thing, when you manage to make a story time channel about all these terrible things that just keep on happening to you, all these horror stories, it must reach a point where you wonder if the problem is really with all these people around you and these psycho hairdressers, or if the problem was actually with you. I feel like there is likely a compromise to be made here. That there are a lot of these stories that might have an element of truth to them. Because stories do tend to reflect our lives and our experiences. But I also think an unbelievably high amount of them are just completely off the rails exaggerated. And I don't think that's particularly healthy. Not for Brooke, at least. After the story time trend ended up in the gutter, Brooke changed around a little, tried a few things, before jumping onto the true crime YouTuber trend. Now, I love true crime. I've literally binge-watched channels like Investigation Discovery for hours upon end. But Brooke's videos, unfortunately, weren't particularly great. If you want someone whose tone actually matches what they talk about, I'd recommend Ellen O'Neill. She's the queen. Not literally the queen, just, you know, the queen. I don't really have too much to add here, however, it does lead onto my next point, which is what I call a refresh phase. One of the biggest problems is that a lot of the channel that she had cultivated at this point was on dormant subscribers, that she had roped in using rather overtly transparent tactics that would never make people stick around anyway. She embarrassed herself for views, basically. People only stick around when they really do admire a creator, and 
Nothing that Brooke did was particularly admirable. Sometimes when creators want to make an evolution, they'll make a video saying they want things to change, which is what Brooke decided that she was going to do. Providing that nothing you've done in the past was terribly evil, a simple refresh can be good for the channel. You might lose some subscribers who may be disappointed that you're not maintaining the content that they subscribed for, but at the end of the day, you have to make what you enjoy. This is something she says herself. And I'm staying true to who I am. And I don't care if it gets two views. I don't care if it gets two million views I don't care because I'm gonna love it and I'm so excited for anyone who wants to be on this journey with me of course YouTube is my job and I've had to make some tough decisions and I've had to really think about this a lot of people love my story times a lot of people love my true crime videos but at the end of the day I'm not gonna make videos that don't make me happy you'd watch this and you think you know what the fair enough she wants to make content that she loves fantastic hooray as a side note I feel I've developed a psychic ability to detect announcement videos because I saw that and it popped out immediately to me, even though it could have been basically anything. But who wants to hear about psychic abilities? Let's talk about Brooke more. A refresh is a great thing, but you have to believe it yourself. The problem with Brooke's old content is that from any perspective, I can see it becoming psychologically grating. Exaggerating story times doesn't seem like a huge thing on the surface, but basically creating an idea of a much more exciting life that you yourself weren't living would be deeply unfulfilling. Creating a persona that she had to keep up. At least with people like Tana, they could go and live out their crazy fantasies after talking about them if they wanted to. Brooke was never really successful enough to do that. And true crime stuff, I mean, my parents used to become concerned for me when I watched that stuff for periods of time because of how grim it can truly be. And that's the thing. Although an audience might have been able to give Brooke a fresh start, she was never really prepared to forget a formula that had worked out so much in her head before. That's the thing. I don't think Brooke was used to being real on her channel, no matter how many times she was prepared to tell herself that she was. She was used to presenting an idealized version of herself, or whatever fit the template for the content that she was making, and when something worked, she'd milk it until it was dry. I'm not trying to be sympathetic to her here because I have no sympathy for anything that she's done, but what she was doing was an addiction. She was the prime embodiment of the idea that every time something works, you gotta chase after it and run it into the ground. That can be found in today's situation, because as we noted earlier, she had a pet, a Doberman Pinscher. Lovely guard dogs who are extremely loyal. And you know what? I love dogs. I literally love dogs. Dogs are easily my favorite pet, especially pastoral or guard dogs. They are so committed, it fills an emotional void within me. I love them. I get as excited as them when it comes to playing fetch, and it seems a lot of people are the same. Pet videos have been performing excellently on YouTube recently. There's a life in dogs that we really do appreciate. And then Brooke had a light bulb moment. She can make a video, but this time, make the dog the center of attention. In case you haven't noticed, Brooke isn't a very interesting person. This could easily be proven back in the day when she had to rely on the craziness of her stories and clickbait to coast on views. And when she uploaded other videos that weren't actually so focused on that, well, her views weren't tippity top. So in an attempt to revive her channel, she seemed to alter the perspective of the title and the video from herself to her pet Doberman, named Sphinx. This was a good concept and the video was nice. It was well cut and it carried a lot of energy. Arguably, this was one of the best ideas that Brooke had for a while, especially considering that regardless of the level of their success, her true crime videos were almost certainly demonetized. This video was called Day in the Life of a Doberman Puppy, and well, it did what it said in the tin. No active deception occurring there either. So we had the perfect combination and friendly content that people wanted to watch. The formula was right, and finally, for the first time in months, people were tuning in en masse to view content all eyes on Brooke. What would she do next? Well, what she always knew best. Milk it, milk it, milk it until it's dry. On top of this, ever since her quote, refresh phase, she'd adopted this minimalist, matter-of-fact style titling, which I guess was meant to convey that sort of Emma Chamberlain candidness. I don't really buy it, and once again, with the follow-up videos for her dog, they were kind of exaggerated to almost parody levels, as if she was preparing for the inevitable controversy herself. A very honest video, my real morning routine. Every time she is rebranded, she wants to present it as her real self, but all it revealed to me was a content chameleon trying to be recognized and throwing various ideas at the wall and then spamming them when it stuck. And that's not healthy, not productive, and only plays into a cycle when that inevitably dies. The only way you can cope with that sort of mental strain is if you're completely void of any emotional connection to the content, which is also a terrible way to go about it because then it doesn't matter how you actually feel about that content. All that matters is views, which will never fulfill you because nothing like that will 
ever fully maintain itself. But when you've had your chance to make some views, nothing really matters. Not even the resources that were the reason you had those views in the first place. A lot of people only know about the fact that Brookhouse abused this dog, which was, on principle, bad enough. However, with the additional information that we have unearthed today, what we know is that this same dog was giving Brookhouse's dead channel a new lease of life. The dog actually revived her channel. This channel was built on a constant evolution of character, and every change that she implemented didn't really show any hints of originality. It just bit from other more successful formulas already held by other creators. That's the problem, though. Although she said in her video that she wanted to make content that she cared about, I do wonder if she ever cared about any of the content she made, given the way she went about it. Now, making follow-up videos to a video that has done well is not rare. In fact, many sensible businessmen may do that. I don't have any growth against people who want to make the most of a successful video. However, there is a line, and if creating a video is either of great detriment to you or anyone around you, then you should definitely think twice. But unfortunately, Brooke clearly doesn't have the capacity to think twice, if we even grant her the capacity to think at all. This is what I was saying at the start of the video about caring about your content. Unless it's really low effort, really lightweight, then you have to be invested in the actual creation of it and what it took to get there. And not just the views it may yield, as exciting as they are. Because if that's the case, then I do believe you begin to fall out of touch with your own humanity, just mindlessly churning out what works. And if Brooke was ever humane at all, then she clearly lost that grip. I don't know what on earth she was thinking, even considering. Up uploading that video to YouTube. I know she didn't intentionally put it public, but the fact that it even had the possibility of being exposed almost seems like the perfect karma for what she actually did in the video. As mentioned earlier, the video shows her behaving extremely aggressively to a dog, behaving fairly unexceptionally, in many ways in an extremely friendly and affectionate manner. The video is particularly particularly bad. And I'll tell you why. Because you have someone who may react in the moment to a pet catching them off guard or pissing them off. And although the reaction would still not be justified, they have the brief moment to snap out of any rage that they may be in at that point. Brooke's behavior was extremely confrontational and incessant to the point where she had the chance to think about how she was treating her dog. She actively pursues it and persists in abusive behavior against it. There is very little dispute about what actually happened in the video. It's clear that she makes physical contact with the animal and yells at the dog at multiple points in an extremely aggressive manner. The only thing that seems to be in any dispute is the claim that she spat on her dog. And even then, it's a minority, mostly comprised of Brooke and her fans. Unfortunately for Brooke, that view was just too incriminating for there to be any real denial. She moves her head in a way and makes a sound that resembles spitting. People are going to call a spade a spade, as if the video wasn't bad enough as it was. It's nasty, and you'd think she'd treat any pet with dignity, let alone one that has actually brought her success that she could not provide herself. I think the dog should receive its own YouTube channel, to be honest. What were the motives for doing this? I mean, I've watched enough of Brooke Hounce's content now, and I don't think she necessarily did it for pleasure. She didn't seem to be taking much enjoyment in it. Although you really have to be quite a nasty person already to be capable of this, I would still probably expect a greater circumstantial motive. What that is, I don't know, but I do know the dog should not be in her possession. I think that's a pretty open and shut case. If she is capable of doing that on camera, then heaven knows what she might be capable of doing off camera and often i do think in some cases people shouldn't necessarily lose their pets if i think that what they were doing was just incredibly ill thought out like i did with alinity but the absolute visceral hatred in brooke's eyes i mean it seemed like she genuinely resented the dog to me it just felt like she hated the fact that she had to make a video with this pet She's clearly forcing herself through regardless. There is no way she is enjoying this. In her video, she says she's going to be pranking the dog. And at first, I thought she was just pandering to the trends, you know, combining dogs with pranks. Epic style lol. But what if she saw it as a way to get back at the dog? I mean, pranks typically involve targeting some individual or putting them through something. And it doesn't seem like the most benign of pranks. What's up, everyone? It's your girl, Brooke, here today. For this video, I wanted to prank my dog. Shh. 
I put plaster wrap on the door. I'm going to have him run out. We're just going to see what he does. I don't know. I doubt the dog will fully be able to understand the comedy side of it because normally when the prank's over, you know to explain it to the person and they laugh or it's just fake and the other person's in on it regardless. Neither are particularly practical in this instance when the subject is a dog. It makes me wonder if she does have some level of repressed hatred towards her dog for basically becoming the star of her channel, which I know is a wacky theory, but the amount of contempt generally seems like she loathes the dog, and although there may be some other reason that we're not aware of, there's nothing that can justify this. She hits a dilemma. She either uploads a video with her dog and gains those views, but sacrifices focus on her content on, you know, her, or she tries to make videos about herself, has that feeling of validation, but is sending her channel back to the era of, well, not the most overwhelming success. She chose success, but sacrificed the one thing she cared about, herself. What if she was just angry she was losing her grip on that? Now that's just my theory, my perspective. I'm sure there are a plethora. At the end of it all, theories and explanations are important because then we can work out the consequences for that person and also the motivation so that we can prevent it in the future. But as mentioned earlier, the consequences are pretty clear. She is not fit to have a dog, whatever mentality she is in right now. To hurt an animal as genuinely loyal, there's no two ways about it. Regardless of theories, the conclusion doesn't change, so I won't dwell on it for much longer. However, as mentioned earlier, she responded. And if there's one thing we love on the right opinion, it's a good response. But if there's one thing we love more, it's a bad one. Now, Brooke's career was already over. There was literally nothing that could save her YouTube channel. It was finished. Done. Ended. Finny. Close the curtains. The fat lady is singing. Unless she had an evil doppelganger who was the product of a failed experimental project take over from her and punish the dog. But that just sounds like a wacky film plot. Honestly, I was grudgingly impressed by the fact that she even put out a response, but it doesn't make it good, of course. Obviously, you have to ignore her first response, which thanks people for being understanding, which is unbelievably hilarious, as I don't think understanding is exactly the adjective I'd use to capture the moment. I mean, if she does genuinely feel their understanding, then their understanding of the situation is that she deserves to face much harsher consequences than she has. When realizing that people weren't quite as sympathetic towards her case as she thought they were, she decided to put out a more lengthy statement addressing her little mishaps. So firstly, I hate to be pedantic, but when writing a formal apology, try and get the spelling and grammar correct, please. I don't expect perfect spelling and grammar a lot of the time. Hell, I can't even expect it from my own editors half the time. But when you're writing a serious apology, get someone to read it through. Read it through yourself. Whatever perfects it. You want to make sure that you show yourself as taking this as seriously as possible. So confusing affected with affected is not good. For those who aren't aware, affected with an A at the start implies a verb, a doing word. I affected your emotions. If you have an effect with an E as in a noun, then it would be you having an effect on someone. The only time you use affected with an E is when you've carried out something. So for example, I affected a policy in which I sacked my editors for spelling words wrong. You see what I did there, editors? You see? Good. <laughs> As a side note, now I've spoken about the aesthetics of apologies, but it means nothing in this instance. Unfortunately, for example, in my Pokemon video, I spoke about how it's important to frame your mental state as not exactly excusing your actions, but as explaining them. If you can show your judgment as diminished to the point where it may lead you to make a bad call, people may be more forgiving. Brooke does actually employ this, but completely fails to recognize that she doesn't satisfy the amount of diminished judgment that would be required to abuse your dog which is the key problem here. Having a bad week, having a bad month, having a bad year, having a bad decade does not justify her actions. And although she does acknowledge that, it does bring into contention why she's posting that at all. Another problem with her response is that she seems to focus on the fact that she shouted. And although the hostility was rightfully criticized by many people, I think people were also much more focused on the physical behavior exerted by our good friend Brooke here. However, to counter this, she refutes the notion 
stating that she is an abuser, stating that she did not physically put the dog in pain or audibly put the dog in pain. I don't know how you audibly measure pain. I guess the dog didn't shout enough, but a dog doesn't have to scream for pain to be elicited. This seems like an extremely weak defense. She also disputes the claim that she spat on him, which once again is hard to argue with the glaring evidence, but if she genuinely feels that she didn't, well, what can I say? It seems obvious, but what can she do? She then goes into a fairly incoherent ramble about how she's sorting out the dog, which implies the dog held some responsibility for provoking the response from Brooke. This is also referenced at the start of the response where she says that it was necessary that she reacted in a way that enforced acceptable behavior, such as not jumping up in your face with the mouth open. I mean, that is a pretty natural thing that many dogs do. Unless it was occurring on an excessive basis, then I don't think you need to take any action, let alone what you did. The whole talking about all the lessons the dog is taking just seems insulting really when the spotlight is on what she can do as a dog owner to improve despite admitting that she's messed up she doesn't seem to want to talk about what she's going to do to improve herself talking about untraining the dog so he doesn't provoke her again i mean that's just a bad look on her part because it makes it seem like she's trying to avoid the situation provoking her reaction again which implies she doesn't have faith in her own patience now of course she does say briefly towards the end that she's going to be working on her own side but i feel the whole there's two sides of this narrative doesn't work when the other side is a literal dog and we've already observed the actual side through the lens of a camera the other thing that brooke constantly turns to in this instance is the appeal to authority the idea that anyone who truly knows her knows that everything's fine and she's a loving dog parent which is a bad argument if no one's really willing to back it up themselves on top of this some people who claim to know you don't seem very favorable at all um, but me and Brooke Howe just a date about like two years ago, um, in this thing called Sober Power Couple. It was dumb, it was stupid, it was pointless. Uh, yeah, so she came to visit me in Florida for about a week. Um, and just to throw out there too, she's vegan and she did not shower one time while she was there. And we gave her all the necessities that she needed to shower and she just did not do it. My mom even said something to me. It was absolutely disgusting. Um, but I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about how she uh, treated my dog. Um, I have a miniature schnauzer, she's small. Uh, she would throw my dog around as if it was a cat, and I didn't see anything of it at the time, but now that this dog stuff is coming out, it makes so much sense uh, that she is not a, a fan of animals, or she just doesn't like to treat animals with the same respect as if you would treat a human being, you know? Um, but uh, she didn't want the dog to sleep near us at all while she stayed there, or anything like that. It's very messed up, and I do not think she deserves that dog. Now, he might have just said this for the clout for all I know, but it's risky business saying that anyone who knows you will be on your side because then someone who knows you who subsequently calls you out would invalidate your argument. Unless you suddenly claim that they actually aren't your real friends. No true Scotsman style. She also makes the bold statement that anyone who has witnessed or heard animal abuse will be able to see that her behavior did not actually fit the criteria of abuse. Once again, an awful thing to say because you completely open yourself up to people with experience in the area contradicting you and then you just look like an idiot. It also seems very manipulative, implying that if you've seen animal abuse, then you must be able to see that this ain't the same. The sad thing is she seems so convinced that she's just out here doing her best and this small blip is something that she'll emerge from. It's not. As a statement, it seems like she wants to present more context, but saying, I'm the good guy, I promise, to a rabid horde of angry viewers doesn't work. She says she doesn't want to defend her actions, but there's no other way to look at this other than an attempt to explain or justify. She tries to act as a third person observer into this situation that she was directly involved in, as if she's the one fact checking and correcting. I'm sorry, girl, you don't receive that liberty. You lost the game. As mentioned briefly at the start, she also released a video titled A Message For You. She doesn't really add too much other than stating that she's now volunteering at a shelter. Um, I'm now a volunteer at a local animal welfare organization and so I'm really happy and excited about that. And since the matter I have invested in professional dog training, I'm learning so much and I promise you that my pet owner relationship is stronger than ever. Good for her, I guess. But one of the really annoying things was this to me, actually. Thank you for that. And I also want to apologize to anyone who was offended. It has never been and will never be my intention to hurt or offend anyone. 
ever. I'm not gonna sit here and try to justify my actions. I'm just not gonna do that. I really hate this phrase. It's one of my least favorite phrases. Why is she sorry if you were offended? For me, why is it so hard to just apologize for the action rather than the reaction? It's not like you said an edgy joke and someone may have taken it the wrong way. You actually made physical contact with a dog on camera. Why is it so hard to take responsibility? She also says she welcomes the discussion about this little incident. I want to say thank you to anyone who has reached out about this topic or engaged in this discussion over the past month or so. Um, I just want to genuinely say thank you because I think as a society, it is so important that we continue to talk about things we feel need to be talked about and discuss issues we feel need to be discussed. And I would love for you to get to know me and for any YouTuber or um, other influencers or other public figures even who have commented on the situation, I pray, I pray that one day we can meet because I would love to show you who I really am and I would love to show you my true heart and personality. Once again with this tone as if she is the moderator of a debate rather than the subject of an animal abuse scandal, please give it a rest. You can say that you'd love to meet everyone who's made a video on you and changed their mind, but the simple fact is you won't change their mind. People can pretend to be nice, you know, that was the point of why people have turned on you. I think many have seen enough. And that brings us to our final part. There are two simple points I want to emphasize here. That there is nothing wrong with presenting things from your perspective, and there's nothing wrong with even correcting misconceptions. But you can't make it the center of that when there are much greater claims to be addressed. Brooke needs to understand that the video has done all the reputational damage that cannot be rectified with a matter-of-fact response. There have definitely been worse responses, but I think the problem is that there was no text response that could communicate the level of remorse that many would perceive as necessary to vindicate her. Maybe even no response at all. As said, I think it would have been a near impossible sell as it was, and if she had shown too much emotion, it probably would have been seen as pity bait. But there's still a balance, and you can't come in with a tone that says to people, you know, I really shouldn't shout it that way, but the dog was in my face and I was in a bad mood and the dog has been acting up recently, so we're going to get it training. Don't worry. It won't happen again. Anyone who really knows me knows this isn't how I'm normally at. Please don't take too many implications from it. Unfortunately for Brooke, leaked videos that aren't intended for the public eye are probably the sort of content that people take the most implications from. Because at that point, you're not playing a character. In her response, she defends her regular persona. The bubbly, friendly Brooke as her standard mood. But whether she was in a good or bad mood cannot really justify such actions. That's the point. We've all done irrational stuff when we're pissed off. But there's a line for many people. And you know, a pet dog isn't just for the good days, but it's also for the bad days when we're feeling down. And when we're feeling down, we shouldn't try and force ourselves or our pets through another video for the sake of ad revenue. Sit it out. Spend some time with your dog. Your dog is meant to cheer you up when you're feeling bad. The video didn't just tell us about Brooke's mentality in the moment, but to me it said a lot about her own perception of content creation. Don't make content that under no circumstances you could see yourself caring about. Don't view sentient beings as view traffic. Don't tell people that this is your honest, true videos if that is not the case. And don't put it in your titles. I mean, how much more obvious could you be? We all know that people's lives, particularly when represented through the highlight reel of a vlog, are exaggerated. But we still still like to imagine that the person has some investment in how they carry themselves, and we still like to imagine how they behave in less than ideal environments, behind the scenes, even if they're having a bad day, even if they make a bad call, even if they lash out from time to time. There was nothing that could suddenly justify the sort of person that we observed in that video, and nothing that gave us the implications that she was like that at all. In her statement, she said she wasn't trying to convince people who thought she was a bad person otherwise 
otherwise. But I think that's definitely what she should have been trying to do. It's all good saying, I know myself kind of thing. But I think people believing you're a decent person is a good thing to communicate as well. Particularly when I'm pretty sure you've tried to convey that message through your content. Unless she was implying that people who thought she was a bad person were just too unreasonable. But I think that would be a rather unearned argument at this stage. I think it was a case that reasoning led people to believe you were a bad person. But you know what? She is right to an extent. As mentioned earlier, there wasn't much she could have said at this stage that would have changed people's perception. Maybe she just did it as a public statement due to the impending police investigation. Maybe with everything considered, it was the best thing to do. However, even with that considered, it was a pretty poor statement because police and authorities are swayed by emotional sentiments like remorse and regret too. And she just overall fails to show that. Being able to blame circumstances may work when you're talking about a psycho hairdresser, but not a bloody dog. The whole statement just seems too distant from the situation itself. And that distance is something that perhaps she's felt for too long. We've all had the case where we ask ourselves why we're doing YouTube. That sort of existential crisis that will eventually be answered when we find our creative flair. But I was constantly asking myself why Brooke was doing YouTube when watching her content. And there's nothing wrong with doing a variety of content. But from the start, it constantly seemed like a grapple with trends that was so fleeting and insubstantial that they could never yield the lasting success that Brooke clearly aspired for. And every time something did work, she'd max maximize it and then it'd die and she'd be back to square one and this time the dog revived her channel in some ways that would be an inspiring tale for someone who sees the interaction as a positive outcome but her behavior wasn't of someone who genuinely appreciated that it was the same sort of rancid entitlement that pervaded some of her earlier story times you know story times really do appeal to the inner narcissist because it's talking about yourself and unlike other story times like animation which can appeal to artistic creativity it's all about Number one. One of the things I noticed was that out of a 10 minute video, Brooke would sometimes spend two or three minutes just talking about herself. And at first I thought she was just filling up the runtime to insert the mid rolls. But maybe she is literally that self obsessed. She talks about this a lot of the time as well. You can't not watch story time videos. I don't know, or at least maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm just weird and like have an addiction like that. But I really love story time videos. I don't think I've ever done an intro so fast. Can we just applaud right now? Like applause, please, standing ovation. Like, let me hear it. No, oh, calm down. Let me hear it. No, oh, it's okay. No, come on, bring it up. Wow, I'm so annoying. Literally, I'm so sorry. I like how I'm not even acknowledging the fact that I look like literal ass right Right now not figuratively literal ass like literal like what like what is happening like what caring is important and it's clear that Brooke cared about something but it wasn't the content, it wasn't the output, it was a status that she constantly chased. And whatever motivation for her cruel, spiteful behaviour towards a dog who was so clearly loyal to her, it's clear that what she cared about was greater than the content she was creating at the time. If I was revealed to not actually believe a lot of my opinions, if I was revealed to actually love a bit of dog on dog, then I think people would have the right to feel misled. These videos were meant to be honest snapshots of a person or dog's life, but they weren't. And the one time we see something that we're not meant to see, it's unbelievably viscerally negative. And it wasn't even leaked by someone who may be trying to bias that perception. It was Brooke herself. She made a career of being exaggerative and being fake. It's only ironic that her one moment of honesty is her downfall. Brooke's career as a YouTuber, I think, is over. Her status as a dog owner is hopefully over now too. But I always use these situations as a message to audiences and even friends and family of these people to make sure those you support are real, genuinely care about these things. I know it's hard to judge and I'm not saying we can often do that, but when it is exposed, hold them to a standard because when you don't know what someone's really like and you give them something that they want to keep at all costs, then this can happen. They'll do it when they're feeling good, when they're feeling bad, and regardless of who gets hurt, even if it's man's best friend. So yes, that was the video. I want to give a 
big shout out to my editors who've once again probably done a fantastic legendary job i'm going to leave their links in the pinned comment and send them all the love they deserve fantastic fantastic people i'd also like to give a big thanks to my patreons the ten dollar patreons are up on screen right now i have to thank my fifty dollar patreons personally though and that is some hullabaloo the spectre angel Bo Wright, nico deschamps sarah elizabeth and caroline fantastic thank you so much it really makes a difference i'd also like to extend a very special thanks to my hundred dollar patreons brandon adam michael and christopher caress thank you so much i can't express it enough you know it makes a whole lot of difference if you want to hit me up on twitter i'm at the right opinion facebook the right opinion official and my discord will be in the pinned comment too i have a new instagram i'm trying to use instagram honestly i'm a bit confused by it not because i'm a boomer i promise mainly because i guess it's for people whose lives are interesting and my life just isn't interesting i feel bad for saying that i'm probably the most interesting aspect about my own life and that's only because i'm a bit insane i don't think i have too much else to add i hope you guys are having a, a decent week i'll send my love as always and i'm the right opinion and i will see you in the next one <laughs>